Hey there everyone, this is Samuel Johnson and welcome back to the Phantom Perspectives and today we're going to be discussing episode 41 of Danny Phantom, Girls Night Out and uh, this is an episode, this one is not a Danny episode, like he's in it but the, the intention is instead focused on, well, the side characters, namely Sam, Jazz, and Maddie as Danny and as Danny and Jack are going off for a father-son fishing trip and so they're out of town for what happens next but Around the same time that they're doing this, some ja um, Kit Kitty, Johnny 13's girlfriend, Penelope Spectra, and uh, Ember and Ember are having boy problems. Well, specifically, well, specific in specifically Ember and and Cat and Kitty. Spectra is close. The thing that Spectra is closely to a boyfriend is her assistant, but otherwise, apparently Johnny 13 and 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 Kitty had got into a fight, and so jo Johnny stormed off and ran to Amity Park to fight Danny to blow off some steam. And likewise, Ember did the same, insulted her boyfriend, and so he ran off too. And her boyfriend, to my surprise, who to my surprise, kind of, I looked it up, but still, kind of, it just kind of comes up in this episode. Her boyfriend is Skulker. Turns out that the two of them are dating. Apparently, this was like a thing in an earlier episode. They both got caught in the, they both got caught in the Fenton thermos together, and now they're dating. But whatever. And so, pretty much, what's going on with Skulker throughout the episode is that he's just con is that wherever while Danny and Jack are trying to go fishing, Skulker continually attacks them. I'm sorry, oh, as uh, but in the meantime, back in it, but in the meantime, the three girls decide that they want to try, are are steamed at their respective others with I think the expectation of Spectra, but even then, she apparently she and her assistant aren't doing so well because the only reason he didn't go to join Johnny and Skulker was because they didn't invite him, and apparently Kitty has a new pa and apparently Kitty actually does have a ghost power that uh, unique to herself beyond the possession to, via her clothes thing that we now see in this episode, and it's pretty much that when she blows a kiss at someone, they will disappear. If she blows the kiss again, within like if she blows the kiss again, then eventually the that person will come back, but if she doesn't do anything to bring the person back within 12 hours, they just disappear. Where do they go? Even she doesn't know, which it's kind of weird because it's her power, but whatever. So they decide that they're just going to go out and go after their boyfriends because go after their boyfriends. But, and so in the meantime, though, with Danny and with Danny gone, Jazz, Sam and Tucker are now in charge of making sure Amity Park stays safe. And in the meantime, Maddie with Jack gone wants to work on some of her own individual inventions without having to worry about keeping Jack in line, which I kind of find a little humorous, but but pretty much Sam wants nothing to do with Jazz because she thinks she's been doing this longer, and Jazz is Jazz and still kind of doing what she did the last time Danny, the moment she tried to help Danny before, and I guess you can kind of make the argument that she, that since Danny is tasking them all with finding them, with doing this, I think it kind of makes sense so that she would actually be a little bit excited to be a part of the adventure, but... Again, Sam Sam doesn't really want anything to do with her, especially since the team name she came up with for the, for the group was called the Ghost Getters. However, on the Sam even cites that apparently one of the reasons that she's not good for this is because she doesn't have the proper attire, including a Spectre Deflector, which apparently they've made more of them since the last time we saw them, which I don't think makes a lot of sense. But you can make the argument that maybe that maybe when Danny came back from the from Dark Danny's future, he brought the Spectre Deflector with them, and like with Dark Danny, it's now out of time, so maybe you can have two of them. But So maybe that's what they're going on. But Tucker decides that, that Jazz can just have his. But it's around that time that Kitty, Spectra, and Ember come in, and Kitty, of course, starts chewing out Johnny because she sees him flirting with another girl. Out of On top of that, more on top of that, a bunch of guys recognize Ember, and they all start fighting over her. As such, the group decides that they're just going to try and find... As such, Kitty, angry with Johnny, tries, tries to hit him with one of her kisses, but then Ember uses her guitar to amplify the kiss and cause the, to, and cause a massive... and pretty much spreads the po its power all over Amity Park, pretty much making every man across every Amity Park just disappear, leaving only the women... And only women and to add even and to make sure the women don't miss their significant others and our brothers and our friends and whatever they, ember utilizes their spe another spell to get them under all under their control so that now they're okay with not having men around anymore the only people that the only people that aren't affected are jazz sam and maddie maddie because she was protected by the, in the bunker because that's where she was working on her stuff and jazz and, and jazz and sam because they were wearing specter deflectors but 
pretty much now they're deciding that they're just going to turn Amity Park into their own personal haven, and so they all just go nuts around Amity Park. Like, eh. like Spectre ho starts hosting her own cooking show. Cat Kitty starts hosting her own little drill. Starts hosting her own little dr start her own drills and trying to find perfect fi finding fighters while Ember is just rocking out and, gr and giving shows for everybody. But in the mean, and pretty much they're just making this what a girls' night. They're just pretty much they're just pretty much trying to have fun. As such, Jazz and Maddie, Jazz and Sam manage to go back to Fenton Works and find Maddie and update her on the situation. And they say that they need to find a, and they say that they need to find a way to undo the spell. Jazz says she tries that. Jazz says she has a plan, but she won't. But Sam, not, th not thinking that she's worth it, that she, not, she'll, not thinking that her plan's going to bomb, says that no, we're not going to listen to you. We're going to do my plan. And so she thinks that they can just split up and take on each of the ghosts. But unfortunately, they all get caught up in what they're doing as. Maddie gets pulled up as an unwilling volunteer then they, as they take away her stuff, and she ends up cooking with Sam's mom, which, just the thought of that is hilarious. Sam doesn't get a chance to go after Kitty, because just before she can blast her with the, with the Fenton Thermos, she sent, Kitty has her go up against a, a stronger fighter, and Jazz, before she can blast Ember, gets booed off, the, booed off her stage because she's a poor singer. Which, I don't know. I mean, I, mean, I, get, I, I still think that they could have easily blasted them. Like, cause, just because they were put in these situations, I feel like they could still do something. They got close, and they could have just blasted them. But, I guess because of these small failures, they decided to give up. But around that time, they're going to... But, pretty much, they're just running out of time. And I have no idea how they know about the 12-hour limit, but they apparently do. Because reasons, I suppose. And Jazz finally says that she wants to give her plan a go. Sam tries to knock it down again, but Maddie tells her, no, we, got, we should at least hear her out, and... Pretty much, her plan is just simply to trick Kitty into doing the kiss again, and this time, only this time, only this time to find a way to negate it, and have, having it spread out across town, which I feel like should have been their first plan. But whatever, maybe Sam thought that they could interrogate them. I don't know. And her plan involves one of Maddie's inventions because she'd been working on it herself, and it's called a mat. And Jazz calls it the Maddie Modulator. Essentially, it can reverse it. It can reverse spectral waves, causing them to do the opposite of what they're supposed to do. As such, if they can trick Kitty into deploying her kiss and having Ember amplify it again, they can use it to, they can use that, they can use the Maddie modifi modifier to pretty much reverse its effects and bring all the boys back. Though, if you want to get technical, he they could still do that, but whatever. I guess maybe Kitty has to be the one in charge for that, so. But, of course, they have to wonder, of course, they need Kitty to shoot out the kiss again, so what they do is that they dress up Sam like Danny, styling her hair, giving him her, giving her, giving her Danny's clothes and, what ha and whatever. And, tricking her into going around. And so they have her go up during a concert where all three, or Ember, Spectra, and Kitty are present. And then she goes out and tries showing herself off, trying to make them think that she's a boy running around. In the meantime, the and so when they see that they think they missed one, they try doing this again, but the one Kitty blows out the kiss and Ember amplifies it again because they want to be sure they get all the boys that are there. Maddie hits it with a modifier, and it pretty much do and it brings back all the boys while also undoing their mind control. And before they can get a chance to do it again, the girls jump into action and pro attack them proper, which I still think the earlier plan could have worked. They could have still blasted them with the they could have still blasted them with the Fenton thermoses, but again, they I can't and again I kind of okay with Jazz's plan because it actually does because it's actually pretty creative. And on top of that, they did need to get, bring all the guys back. That should have been their priority, but. They defeat all the girls and trap them all and trap them in the Fenton Thermos. And in the meantime, with Danny and Jack, they manage to they Dan, they manage to subdue Skulker. Danny was able to fight Skulker off whenever Jack wasn't looking. Still making me wonder why he had his parents' memories erased of him being half ghost when this could, which would have made this whole whole thing easier because Jack would have been okay with Danny fighting off Skulker. But the third attack, a Skulker attacked them with like a ghost dragon or ghost lizard or whatever. And it eats Danny, and Jack, of course, goes out. And Jack, of course, springs into action to save his son, knocking Skulker off, knocking his head off, knocking his head off, causing the, the lizard to ram into a rock. And then when Skul Skulker, now just in the head compartment, tries to run away, Jack grabs it. Jack grabs him, and Danny sucks him into the Fenton thermos. So that's taken care of. And the episode, and the episode pretty much ends with Sam and Jazz kind of going off and enjoying themselves while Danny and Jack wonder what they missed. So. On the whole, I think this is a pretty okay. Ep I think this is an, a decent episode. There are some kind of plot fallacies, like, like having all the like. I can, I kind of find it to be a big leap from from having a fight with their boyfriends to just trying to just getting rid of all boys in general. But I'm kind of okay with it because it, it it's not a because 
I kind of like seeing these girl. I kind of like seeing these three characters interacting with each other, and I don't. I don't. Look, I, I'm okay with it because I just kind of like seeing how Sam, Jazz, and Maddie try trying to resolve the situation. I'm okay with that. It's real. I'm okay with that, and I know. And again, you could probably say, "Well, Danny's gone. He couldn't solve it. Well, he probably would disappear either way." So I don't know. I feel like you could have at least. I don't know. You probably could have had him gone too, and had them still do that. So I think the B plot could was just kind of. Actually, I'll talk about that right now. The B plot for the episode was just kind of there. Like it didn't really further anything. But it was not, but it wasn't bad either. It wasn't like some. It wasn't like time wasting, like with da like with Danny possessing his parents in the in the second episode of the series. But otherwise, it wasn't bad. But it didn't really serve a greater purpose since the stuff that were treading there about Danny and Jack or in closer has already been done before. And it's not bad because I still like seeing Jack brush it, running into action when his family needs him, which is always cool. But otherwise, just really doesn't serve much purpose for the greater scope of the plot. But the A plot, I think, is perfectly fine. Though, again, there are some, like, kind of fallacies. Like, having them... Like, having the group just jump to such extremes because they got into fights with their respective others. Which I kind of find to be a little dumb. And I can understand having, like, a girl's night out. Like, maybe just do this out of anger. And these are vengeful go. These are vengeful spirits. They're really kind of... Like, they're, they, they're, they, they're not nice people. Like, Ember has... Ember has tried to kidnap all the adults and brainwash almost the world into trying to serve... And try to make her stronger, but and Spectra has st stolen the and stolen the power has stolen energy from the youth to make herself young, and Kitty, uh, I admit she possessed she possessed Paulina. I admit to try and make her boyfriend jealous, but the episode is a but just kind of see I kind of feel like the jump in the extremes is a bit well extreme I suppose seeing them kind of go to this much level to get rid of all the boys in Amity Park, but. Again, it is still kind of fun. I do kind of find it a little humorous as they're trying to have a, as they're just trying to ha enjoy the boy free night that they have for a little while. Though again, I feel like they should have at least. I feel like at the end of the day, they probably would have gotten better. But I don't know. I, like I think this is just part of the flan. I, I guess you can kind of say this is part, probably part of the flanderization. Like because the actions as a whole don't feel too out of character, but they feel a little extreme for these characters. It's like with Vlad in the last two. Two episodes like what he's doing doesn't feel like feels like something that it doesn't feel out of character but it feels but it doesn't feel like something in the realm of what the character would do like the way they're doing it the way they're how the way they're continue the way they're moving about it it does feel like like it does feel like the character but something about how they're doing it makes it kind of make you scratch your head and think why are they doing it and again it kind of would make sense for like kitty and I can kind of understand it with Kitty and with Johnny Thirteen because Johnny Thirteen kind of had it coming. Like after the fight, you saw you actually did see him floating with a girl, and I actually kind of found it. And, and of course, Kitty's reaction was something that made a lot of sense, especially and because their relationship is kind of tumultuous at be, at best. But and the same kind of same with Ember and Skulker. Ember has a fiery personality, and considering how she died being stood up, I can understand her kind of jumping to these reactions too. Actually, actually, well, kind. Of, I just, again, I feel like the extreme of them deciding to get rid of all boys in general, with, have, even though they have nothing to do with their boyfriends, does kind of feel at a very extreme. I feel like if you had, like, I, I can picture this reaction if they went through a breakup, believe it or not. Like, if Kitty and Johnny and Ember and Skulker went through, like, a giant breakup, and I feel like that would make sense. And as for Spectra, I don't know what she's involved in this at all, actually, the more I think about it. Like, she's there to act, to make, to kind of make, to give the group a rule of three, but... The closest, the, she didn't seem to really be having a lot of issues with her assistant, with her assistant, considering that he's the one that ratted out Johnny and Skulker. But I feel like that their beef should have been with Johnny and Skulker. The more I think about it, the fact the, the then jumping to the extreme of well, are we on to argue with their boyfriends and they ran off? Get rid of all of them. I that, that feels like a way too big of an extreme for these characters. The more I think about it, it just doesn't make a lot of sense and it's a very big leap in logic and again i know these are super villains but again i feel like they should go to these extremes with the men that wronged them not every single boy in amity park like kitty used danny like i kind of remember the episode like like the episode where kitty used danny in Lu the lucky and love episode i think that was that kind of made sense kind of made sense but that was again a tip with johnny she was trying to hurt johnny and even when johnny said you can have her she was still trying to continually use danny to hurt johnny and ember i feel like would be kind of a similar case or at the very least, if uh, Skulker ran off, she'd let him just blow, she'd just kind of do her own thing, and if he tr 
She just let him do her own thing. You can make the argument that maybe she just wanted to... And this was their way of blowing off steam. Because, again, so, okay, something I kind of liked, though, is that when Johnny and Skulker got into fights with their significant others, they both decided to go after Danny to try and either blow off some steam or prove them wrong. Like, Skulker's just constantly pursuing Danny because... Because Ember said he was a bad hunter, so he decided to prove her wrong. Which, again, I for Skulker, that kind of does make sense. He's a very prideful being, and he has gone after Danny before. Has gone after Danny on multiple occasions, so to hear hear that he smart probably would like to probably prove her wrong. And for Johnny, it doesn't mean that's not out of character for him. Just kind of run off while he and Kitty are in an argument, and probably just maybe flirt with other people. And you, and I kind of and something I kind of find a little amusing is that this continues the frenemy type of deal with Danny and his en with Danny and his enemies, specifically with Johnny. Because when Danny and Johnny are fighting, and Danny asks what the heck, why the heck he's here, why he's doing, Johnny says, "I'm not. Oh, I don't have an end game here. I just need to blow off some steam." Me and Kitty got into a fight. I actually kind of find that a little amusing, like the fact that the fact that he's actually just openly telling this to Danny, like yeah, they're bad, like yeah, they're enemies, but he's just actually telling, oh, I'm just, I just want to blow off some steam, dude. It's nothing personal right now. It's actually kind of amusing there, and I kind of like that. And again, while the methods are extreme, I like seeing Jazz, Maddie, and Sam working together and in, ta in tandem. And I admit, I do kind of, and admit, I do. This does still play this Jazz's strengths as well. Jazz, this, while probably not the best in go, is probably not the best when it comes to ghost hunting. Is not stupid, and she does plan ahead, and she does have experience with ghost hunting, both working with Danny and briefly working with her, briefly working with Jack, and briefly working with Jack when it was just her and Jack at the Fenton household. Otherwise, so it kind of so while she can't, while she does is kind of a bit of a a novice when it comes to ghost hunting compared to everybody else in the group. It doesn't. It does make a bit of sense that she is the one, that she can actually still plan around things, and she actually does make a good plan. And I think that yeah, like but again, I still feel like Sam's plan could have worked. It's just that it was missing what Jazz had. It really does. It does kind of feel like that's the moral of the, like the moral, like to not to not just get, to actually get to help get to know someone more. Though again, we kind of dealt with that issue before with Jazz when she when Danny told her that he knew that she knew about his secret, but. Again, it was still nice seeing them work off each other, and I admit I do like the climax when they trick the when they trick the the trio of ghosts into bringing back all the men, and suddenly they all just armor up with Sam putting on the Fenton goat the Fenton ghost peeler and ja and Maddie and Jazz pulling up pulling up their respective weapons to fight. I thought that was really cool. I liked that, and I, again, but I, and again, I think that was the biggest strength of the episode, just kind of seeing these characters all working together to solve to resolve this problem. I thought that was nice. So, but which so. I feel like that's the strong point of the episode, but otherwise, the villain's plan felt way too extreme even for them. The B-plot, while not a bad B-plot, just didn't feel like it added anything or kind of expanded on anything. It wasn't bad, but just there. But, and, it, well, and, it did have, and on top of that, it did have some nice moments here and there, some good funny, some funny, some funny, some funny line, some good, some nice character, just some nice character stuff. But, just, so, on the whole, I think the episode is just decent. All right. Kind of in the same realm as the last episode, but kind of more, do but kind of more middling into the actually entertain, into, into legitimately good rather than st and so bad it's good. So, yeah, I personally think this is a decent episode. Villain's plot, way too, uh, feels like, feels a bit way too out there. It would fit the characters if they were directing it at the people that wronged them instead of everyone, but otherwise felt too extreme even for them. I, but otherwise, again, liked the character interaction, liked the climax, liked how, liked how they all came together. On the whole, just a, a decent episode. Not great, but kind of middle of the road, just but middle of the road decent, so. Yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say. Thank you for watching. I'm Samuel Johnson, and I'll see you next week. Take care.